we have a hydrate of magnesium carbonate and it's going to get heated so that all the water disappears or is evaporated away. The mass is going to go down because we're losing all of the water to 7.58 grams. With this information, we can figure out the formula of the hydrate and therefore the name as well. Here's the idea. What we have is magnesium carbonate, that's MgCO3 dot, we don't know how many waters. This could be monohydrate, dihydrate, trihydrate. We don't know what the coefficient on water is in this formula. But what we do know is that we have 7.58 grams of just the MgCO3, and we lost some water. Now, how much water did we lose? 15.67, okay, 15.67, oh, there we go. Oh my goodness, minus 7.58. We lost 8.09 grams of water. And together, those made the 15.67 gram sample. Now, the key to solving for x here is to figure out how many moles this is and how many moles this is. Then we'll be able to figure out the ratio between the two. So for this one, the number of moles, by the way, is always mass divided by molar mass. We have 7.58 grams divided by, oh, actually, I don't even know the molar mass of magnesium carbonate. Let's figure that out. Magnesium contributes 24.31, carbon contributes 12.01, and we have three oxygens, each of which contributes 16. I'm just adding up the molar masses of the atoms that make up that compound. 24.31 plus 12.01 plus 3 times 16. That's 84.32 grams per mole. And so I'll put that number here. I'll throw out this marker. Goodbye. And dividing those two numbers by each other will give us the number of moles of just magnesium carbonate. That gives me, and I'm gonna carry a bunch of decimals here. I'm not really worried about sig figs until the end. There we go. So that's the number of moles of just magnesium carbonate. Now we got to do the same thing for water. The number of moles is mass over molar mass. That's 8.09 grams divided by, if you do the molar mass of water, it's always 18.02. You can just take my word on that. By grade whatever, you'll have eventually memorized that divided by 18.02 gives me 0 0.4489456 moles. And here's the idea. You have, in this case, more moles of water than you do of magnesium carbonate, because this is probably a whole number, like 2, 3, 4, 5, could go all the way up to 12, as far as I know. The ratio x is the number of moles you found of water divided by the number of moles of the anhydrous or the ionic compound without the water. Now I'm gonna plug these numbers in. I got 0.4489, I said four, five, six. And I'm gonna divide that by 0.0898956. This, when I do it on the calculator, should give me a whole number. Although 0.5s are allowed as well. I've seen those, but they're rare. 0.089856. Here on my calculator, I'm getting 4.99. Now I'm going to write that down, but what your teacher wants to see is that it's approximately 5. So what that means is there's 5 times as many water molecules as there are formula units of magnesium carbonate. That means that the equation, or rather the formula, of this compound is MgCO3.5. H2O is five times as many moles of water as the anhydrous stuff. And the name of the compound, well, 
it's obviously magnesium carbonate to start, but your teacher's looking for you to convert five to the prefix penta, and you call this a pentahydrate. Magnesium carbonate pentahydrate, and you can figure it all out by only knowing the starting mass of the whole hydrate, how much it was reduced to when the water evaporated, and what the ionic compound you were left with was. Congratulations, you did it. And I was here to help you, but you did it yourself. Best of luck.